Thanks so much. Straight to our very first story. NPP and P4, if you do not say Asokore in the Ashanti region and campaign coordinator for the party's middle belt campaign, Dr. Nana Ayuf Ifriye says the NPP government will not take any action to stop the illegal mining menace as it will affect the party's electoral fortunes. Dr. Ifriye Ayu is a public health expert and currently the chairman of Parliament's Health Committee was speaking at a campaign event, insisted that a party will lose parliamentary seats if it takes any action on illegal mining. Listen. So most day mining, community mining, and finally I'm saying no. And you're different from talk of one of what you before that last month, and this is what the form would have to do or free or that. But we are going after them. We said the oppression we have started this week in the middle of the earth. You're better, you're sound of one and you will go back and look at me. Because the and the But we are who say we are winning the seats in the mining areas. So they decided to go and import foreigners. No, I want to buy an Oman can shop to say we I want to go to Gogo. I want to go to I want to go to I want to the whole year. It's so I have a problem now. And you know what I'm started. So um, we want to explore this further. Coordinator of Eco Conscious, Aula Sewa, joins us at Vazum for some conversation on the back of this. Thanks so much, Aula, for joining me on um, Join This Room. Uh, your initial thoughts about these pronouncements by a public health expert who is also the chairman of Parliament's Health Committee, um, of course, a sitting MP for that matter. Good afternoon. Um, thank you for having me. I just think it's just disappointing. When I first heard this, I said, this must be fake news. Nobody who is in the medical profession, nobody who cares about Ghana, who put, the, who put votes above the welfare of Ghanaians. So we know what is happening. We know about the increase in kidney disease, cancers, neurological um, challenges. We know about the stillbirths, maternal deaths, open pits that are killing people. And all we can think about is votes. This is just... Um, Disappointing. I don't think that anybody who thinks more about votes than about the people should be standing for political office. He really shouldn't be standing. Mm. But and it's worse because the GMA itself has spoken against what is happening. And I would think that he's a member. All right. But do you get the sense that, well, government's commitment to fighting the menace is just a mirage, especially when you take a listen to what the MP had to say? But we know there's been no political will. I mean, the facts speak for themselves. You go all over the country and you see the devastation. If there was the political will, it wouldn't be taking place. We had the demonstrators who were demonstrating against this catastrophe. We saw the number of police officers who were brought. They've been arrested. They have been denied bail. And yet people who are poisoning Ghanaians, I keep on saying, we face an existential threat. Once your water is being poisoned, your forest reserves are being decimated. Your survival becomes very limited. And uh, we don't seem to be bothered about this because there's no political will. 
A president put his presidency on the line, so he said, seven years ago, and things have gone from bad to worse. If the government wants to stop illegal mining today, it will do so. Look at the images you are showing. And the water we are drinking, is we don't know how much mercury is in it because they are not removing mercury or whatever metals from the water. They are just removing the uh, silt. So um, all I can say is that uh, we have given the government up to uh, 30th September to um, accede to our demands, which, if you permit me, are, first of all, to declare a state of emergency so that we can flush out everybody from the forest reserves and remove all machinery and then get rid of LI2462, which re allows mining in forest reserves, including globally significant uh, bounded certainty area, to stop issuing licenses and then to pause community mining. The reason why you need to pause community mining is that we need a reset. Right now, even the big companies, which are few, we can't even monitor them. How much more the thousands of community mining operators? We can't monitor them. Whether they are going according to their licenses or not, we don't know because we don't monitor. We are unable to do so. So we need to pause it and allow the waters to begin to um, um, heal themselves before we reach the point of no return. We cannot treat this as a joke as we are doing. I'm very, very disappointed in the present government. But I have to be honest and say that even the NDC, I heard some remarks being made by President Mahama's running mate, and they were not encouraging. They don't seem to realize that we face an existential threat and we should put party love aside and for once in our lives, put Ghana first. Nobody who puts Ghana first will talk about continuing with illegal mining or with small scale mining or with what is going on. Everybody who puts Ghana first will say, look, let's end all mining for a while and then we can see what happens. But we cannot continue at this rate if we have the interest of Ghana at heart, which clearly we don't. And you talk about lack of political will. Why is it so difficult for politicians to subject themselves to some of these reality will and speak true to power? I think that it's a specific kind of politicians we've got right now. Because, you know, we have politicians who care about the people. I mean, in the UK, we have somebody like Jeremy Corbyn who cared about his people. Go to Rwanda. People accuse President Kagame of all sorts of things. But if you look at the civil war that took place and what is happening now, whether you like him or not, you can say that he has the interests of the people at heart. He has the interests of the people at heart and things are improving. When you come to Ghana, I'm not going to speak for every African country. I can only speak to Ghana. Kwame Nkrumah, our first president, was a politician. Look at what he did for Ghana. You know, he was so interested in moving Ghana forward. He was so in interested not just in Ghana, but Africa. The independence of Ghana is meaningless without the total emancipation of African state. So he had the people of Ghana at heart. My party is Ghana, so I'm only interested in people who put Ghana first. But I won't say that all politicians are terrible. But those who happen to be putting themselves forward at this present time, a lot of them leave much to be desired. I look at, I have, I know politicians in the NDC and also in the NPP, I have to say, who have Ghana, who put Ghana first, but they need to be more vocal. We can't leave it all to Honorable Ablapwa to speak. Others need to be more vocal. But I do know that there are politicians who put the interests of Ghana first, but they need to be more vocal. But the vast majority are only interested in votes and they are a disgrace. They are a complete disgrace to Ghana. And we should not be voting for anybody who is thinking of party before Ghana. Anybody who can't see the devastation that mining has caused and who can't see that we need to have a pause to illegal mining. Look at the photos you are, the images I'm seeing, the devastation. Sometimes you have a forest reserve. We know how many decades, centuries it takes for a forest reserve to be. And then in an instant, excavators go and destroy everything. And we think that because of elections, we should continue with this. But let me say that eco-conscious citizens are asking all political parties to sign up to the state of emergency, to removing everybody from forest reserves and our water bodies, to pausing community mining and to working towards removing LI2462. And again, also to take the report, Dr. Frimpong, Professor Frimpong Boateng's uh, report more seriously and to investigate those who were named. If all political parties and aspirants stand up, sign up to this, 
you're not going to say you're not going to be voted for because whether you vote for NDC, NPP, uh, Chairman Teng, it doesn't matter who you vote for, all are saying the same thing. All right, so, so where do we move from here? Because the public uproar is, you know, evident there. And you get to hear ministers and you get to hear sitting MPs and you get to hear a, a health experts, for example, um, make such pronouncements. It, it, it appears all efforts we are putting in, in, in this regard, you know, it's, it's, I don't know. No, you see, we have some irresponsible persons who are making such, such comments. And I'll say it again, irresponsible and in a sense wicked. Because you know people are dying. Maybe he's not drinking the water from Ghana uh, company because they have told us quite clearly that they don't remove the mercury or whatever. So maybe he thinks he's safe, but it's wickedness because you are subjecting the rest of Ghanaians to a slow death. We are being poisoned from all that we are doing to pollute our waters. But let me say it again. I used to say Ghanaians are not angry now because we are just sitting there allowing our forest reserves to be destroyed and allowing ourselves to be poisoned. But now Ghanaians are beginning to become angry and we've seen what is going on and I've said that a lot of organizations have come together whether you talk about the Catholic Bishops Conference, the Christian Council, the GMA, Organized Labour, UTAG, I name it, um, CSOs, Media Against Galamse and we're all saying the same thing, this has to stop and you, Organized Labour has given the deadline of Monday 30th September so mm. it's not going to carry on as a joke. We understand that this is not a joking matter. Ghanaians are dying. They are being poisoned to death. We are destroying the uh, country that the good Lord gave us, the beautiful environment. Let me say this here. Mm. If our forefathers had been as wicked and irresponsible as we are, we wouldn't have come to meet the beautiful Ghana we came to meet. We'd have to go to museums to look at what forests used to look like. So we have not yet reached the point of no return, but we are getting there. So Monday 30th September is the deadline. If the government decides that um, they don't care about Ghanaians, they only care about votes, let's see what happens. I will ask our coordinator of Echo of Conscious, thanks so much for joining the conversation. We truly appreciate your time here on Join Newsroom. Meanwhile, the Ghana Thank Journalists you, Association has issued a stern warning about the devastating impact of illegal mining on the environment, especially on the country's water bodies. GGA President Albert Jumfo, delivering his speech at the 2024 GGA Awards Night, insisted that they are called for immediate declaration of the state of emergency on all water bodies and the revocation of LI-2462, which permits mining in forest reserves, remains in effect. Clinton Yabwa has more. The Ghana Journalists Association President Albert Jumfo delivered a fiery speech holding the country's leaders accountable for the growing menace of illegal mining, also known as Galamsey. No one was spared, as Dumfo directly addressed President Akufuado, who was seated right front of the packed audience as the special guest at the GJA Awards. We are aware that some time ago, Mr. President, the father of the nation, made a firm vow to stop Galamsey. But regrettably, that promise has not been fulfilled, Mr. President. You are barely three months after the end of the administration, and we are hopeful that you will deal with the situation before you leave office. We still maintain that our state of emergency must be declared over our water bodies and all planned and active mining concessions overlapping with river buffers should be abrogated, and all mining activities within 100 meters buffer of all rivers and streams should be halted with immediate effect. We also reiterate that LI-2462 should be repaired immediately. The GJA president then turned his attention to the presidential candidates of the two major political parties, John Dramani Mahama of the NDC and Dr. Mahama Dubaumia of the NPP, urging them to show greater commitment to ending illegal mining. In a passionate appeal, he also demanded the release of several anti galamse protesters who are currently facing trial for what police described as unlawful conduct during last week's three-day demonstration. But I want to take this opportunity, Your Excellency, to implore these two leading candidates, presidential candidates and all other presidential candidates, to make a firm commitment to the fight against Galamse so we can hold them accountable when any of them assume office in 2025. However, we also believe that Remanding the protesters for two weeks is too extreme and does not send positive signals 
when it comes to protecting human rights. When President Akufuado took the stage, however, he notably avoided addressing the issue of Galamsi, despite a direct call from the GGA for his response. Illegal Mining Report of the Year, Rastas Asari Donko, expressed his disappointment in the president's silence on the matter. I am disappointed tonight that when the GJA president spoke confidently, emphasizing the grave nature of illegal mining across the country and appealing to the president that he should do something about it before he leaves office. I was expecting that the president would make mention at least of illegal mining in his speech, especially at a time when as a country, all your major rivers across the country are highly polluted and contaminated. And that did not push the president to even mention illegal mining, even for a second, in his speech. That, to me, is a big disappointment. Reporting for Joy News, my name is Clinton Yeboah. The Institution of Engineering